Well, President Trump said that he would move our embassy to Jerusalem. But a lot of presidents have said this. President Clinton, President Obama, President George W. Bush. President Bush said, the day of my inauguration, I will move the embassy. But he was inaugurated twice. And I thought, well, you must get in the office and you must learn a lot of things that you didn't know before. And so you decide, better not do this. But there's been a law on our books, the Jerusalem Embassy Act, passed in 1995 by our Congress, which says they have to move the embassy. But they, they put an out in there. They put a little clause in there that said, but if it would endanger national security, the president can sign a waiver. Ah. So guess what? 44 times the presidents have signed waivers why? since 1995. Ah. And then when Donald Trump... He why? Said, why? I, Wait, why? Are they? They're just afraid of the enemies of Jerusalem, they're, right? They're they're afraid of offending the UN because most of them believe the UN is destined to be a wonderful world government, mm -hmm. and so they were going to go straight directly against the UN. But what's your opinion of the UN? Uh, well, we'll get into that <laughs> a little later because that's serious. The one it's world government. Serious. I'll just tell you, the one world government is, is of Satan, yeah. because in Revelation thirteen one through two. When it depicts the one world government, a beast with the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the ten horns of the ten horn king, the next verse says, and the dragon gave this world government beast its seat, its power, and great authority. Five verses above that it says the dragon is that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So the one world government we often refer to international community, mm -hmm. new world order, mm -hmm. uh, world community. We have the, the World Bank, we have the World Court, we have the World Trade Organization, we have the World Health Organization. Satan is right now hurting this whole world into a one world government because once he gets there, then he gets control of it. Then he can control every person on earth. And he intends to control every person on earth. You know what he wants to do? He wants you to worship him. That's right. That's his whole goal. Instead of you and me worshiping God, he wants us to worship God. Mm -hmm. him and he's got a plan to herd the whole human race it's through this one world government they call it globalism or globalization and when i when i was listening to that debate of 17 republicans and all of a sudden i didn't know who donald trump was frankly all of a sudden he starts speaking against globalism i thought wait a minute i haven't heard a politician speak against globalism in a long time hmm. he must know something and then he spoke against the establishment well, I knew about the establishment. I knew that for 50 years, the same powers control both Republican and Democratic parties. And I had understood that because I knew that there was a private club in America and 50% of all cabinet members come out of that private club, whether the Republicans are in power or the Democrats are in power. You know, I wondered why when I voted, I felt like I was voting for Tweedly D or Tweedly Dumb. Mm -hmm. Well, then I found out. <laughs> so w then when he starts speaking against the establishment, I says, does Donald Trump understand this? Well, of course, no, everybody knew he didn't have a chance, right? I mean, everybody knew he didn't have a chance. That's what they said. But we all begin to pray because, now, let me tell you, Donald Trump would not qualify to be your pastor. And he's not a spiritual leader. But God can pick politicians to accomplish his will. I was amazed the other day when Prime Minister Netanyahu was in town on Monday. Yeah. You know what Prime Minister Netanyahu said? He said, Donald Trump is Cyrus. Oh, that's good. Cyrus. Wow. Sounds like a, a book we know of. <laughs> now, in case you don't know about Cyrus, tell us. Cyrus was the Persian king when Belshazzar was overthrown the kingdom of Babylon that had taken God's people into captivity, mm -hmm. and they were there for 70 years now then God's getting ready to bring them back. Cyrus was the king of the Persians. And I got to tell this. I hope we have time. You do. Daniel do. was praying for the restoration of Jerusalem because he had been studying Jeremiah's prophecy and knew that the 70, weeks was, the 70 years was up. They were, Jeremiah prophesied, you're going to go into Babylon 70 years until I can get all the crud off of you and strip you down to nothing so I then can remake you like I want you to be. So... Uh, they all went down into captivity. They were there 70 years, and Daniel saw that the 70 years was up. So he went on a 21-day fast praying, Lord, I'm asking you now to restore Jerusalem. Well, the answer to his prayer was he was thrown in the lion's den. The lion's den 
he spent the night there and the, the head of uh, the Medes, Darius, uh -huh. Uh -huh. went down to pull him out because he didn't mean for Daniel to be in the lion's den. Well, you know that Darius introduced Daniel to his co-ruler, Cyrus. And he said, this is the guy that spent the night in the lion's den. The lion's didn't need him. And, Dar and Dar right. Cyrus said, really? And Daniel said, oh, by the way, you're in the prophecies of the Bible. He says, I am? Yeah, Isaiah 44 and 45, it says right there, Cyrus is my servant. He's anointed to build my house. Right. And Cyrus said, if I'm in the Bible, then done. All you Jews can go back to Jerusalem. You can build the uh, temple back, and I'm going to pay for it. So that whole thing. Now then, Netanyahu is saying that Donald Trump is the Cyrus of this era right now. You believe that? That's right up to this minute what God is doing.